After a long and enforced delay due to the pandemic, the Legend Fires Northwest Stages was finally given the green light to make that rallying call and bring the country's best rally crews back to the northwest of England for a weekend of closed road rallying. And it all started with that ever popular ceremonial start in Garstang. Let the rally cars see the people. In the absence of Peter Taylor, who won the event the last time it ran in 2019, seems a long time ago, doesn't it? Car one this weekend would be 2019 European rally champion Chris Ingram, who was enthusiastic about being out on his local event. Yeah, I can't wait for it. The roads are incredible. Thousands of people have turned up and it's just going to be amazing to compete on my local rally, yeah. Jason Pritchard was no stranger to closed road rallying. The multiple asphalt rally champion was, however, in a new car ahead of his BRC campaign, but was feeling good about the challenge and he was raring to go. Can't wait to have a go in the car. Um, we had a little run on Monday just to try a launch and figure out how to start it. So, yeah, this weekend's all about seat time in the car, ready for the British Championship assault this year. So, yeah, can't wait. It'd be nice to have a start now. Um, a few stages in the dark, getting you know, the atmosphere is here, ready to go. But, yeah, can't wait till tomorrow. Neil Simpson, another local, had finished third here last time out. And with his Simpsons Skoda company on board, again as associate sponsor of the event, tonight's turnout in Garstang was a fantastic result. Absolutely delighted. I mean, what a crowd. The local council have done a phenomenal job. The organisers of the rally have done a great job promoting it. And the local people are really enthusiastic. So, yeah, we're delighted. Neil Ruskell was lucky to make the start this weekend, having damaged the engine on an event the week prior at Donington. But as an associate sponsor of the rally, there was no way that Ruskells could miss it. And they did everything they could to get that car back on the start line. Yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready to get out there tomorrow. The team have done a fantastic job. ATM, Mount Tune to turn things around this week. Can't believe the car's here tonight. But you see you, and I'm really looking forward to getting out tomorrow morning. This man, John Stone, needs no introduction. Title sponsor of the event and, of course, delighted by the turnout here in Garstang from the fans as well as the fantastic entry for the weekend's rallying. Yeah, it's, it's tricky being a, the sponsor and the, and the competitor. Uh, very tricky and I've just got to get my head around that for tomorrow. Uh, but uh, delighted from a sponsor's point of view, delighted of what we're seeing now. Uh, it's only getting bigger and better and better every year, so we're delighted. So that's just a brief introduction to some of the challenges on this year's rally. And with themselves and a number of other competitors all able to take victory here this weekend, it was anyone's guess who was going to come out on top. Everyone gets a good night's sleep ahead of the action getting underway in the morning. Saturday morning then, and the hills here in the northwest of England are alive with the sound of rally cars and straight out onto those fantastic stages. And it would be the number one car of Chris Ingram and Craig Drew taking the lead. This new partnership going well. They were loving the stages and managed a 36 second advantage by the end of the first loop. Second place at this early stage will be Paul McKinnon and Paul Beaton. The Mull rally experts certainly had the pace but they probably weren't used to rallying in the dry, or indeed, the daylight. They may have had half a minute to the leaders, but they weren't going to let that stop them chasing down that win. Neil Simpson and Michael Gibson weren't taking any chances. It was as important to get round to the finish as it was to get a good result on the leaderboard. They had a few setup changes to make on the car, but things were going well so far with third place. As to be expected with a rally of this magnitude, the event would bite early on. We lose Jason Pritchard and Phil Clark. They roll the car in the fourth stage of the day. A disappointing and dramatic early exit from the rally for the pair in their new car. Mark Kelly and Neil Coleman would have a couple of moments in the stages as well, including losing a game of chicken with some sheep and having to slow down a little. But the times were good on the leaderboard, and with the exception of Ingram up ahead, there were only a few seconds between most of the top threes. Fifth at this stage, and no sheep or chicken to contend with, will be Steve Wood and Dale Bowen. A rare appearance in the UK, as Steve does most of his rallying in Ireland. The pace was good, just nine seconds back from Kelly up ahead. Simon Bowen and Richard Robinson would be enjoying competing on their local stages. 
the times matched their enthusiasm too. Sixth place overall for now, only three seconds back from Wood. Frank Bird didn't have a lot of experience on closed roads, but he and co-driver Jack Morton were more than capable of the pace needed to be pulled out of the bag this weekend. Indeed, the pair had won the Cheviot stages last year, which shares some similarities to parts of the stages this weekend. They end the morning seventh place overall. Tom Preston and Carl Williamson would have liked to be higher than they were on the leaderboard, wouldn't they all? But eighth place was a good place to start the day and only four seconds back from Bird as well. The fight was definitely on. More disappointment after getting the car ready at the last minute for the event. We'd lose Neil Ruskell and Andrew Roughhead. That fantastic effort to get to the start line not paying off in the end. They would get back out again later in the day for some seat time, but their fight, as far as the leaderboard was concerned, would now be over. Joe Cunningham and Josh Beer were keeping things neat and tidy. Not something you usually hear, but there would be no room for error on these stages. They stay out of trouble and end the morning in that. And rounding out our top 10 leaderboard will be Darren Atkinson and Phil Sander. They were looking for a strong result on their local stages, and as far as that brief was going, things were looking good. Leading class D and fastest of our two-wheel drive cars as well for now. The second stage of the day would see us lose another crew in a slightly more dramatic fashion. Paul Wedgbury and Neil Dashfield crash out of the event and unfortunately Neil would need to be taken to hospital where he remained okay but nursing some painful reminders of this accident. Ross Brusby and Sam Collins meanwhile would need to buy a lottery ticket when they get to the end of stage four. They survive a very high speed spin on stage, getting away with it just a full 360 in fact. And they managed to get the car going and end the morning with second in class D. Three left, hairpin left. Thought we were going to die then, did you? One five right. 80 up. Turn square right, bail inside. Square right, bail inside. And third place in that class will be Kyle Adam and Stephen Brown, 20 seconds back from Brisbane at this stage. In class E, it will be Wayne Sisson and Perida Wynn Davies who lead the way. This was a big car to get round these tight technical stages, but Wayne was used to getting the best out of that Evo. They lie in 13th place overall. The gap at the top of class E would be a bit of a big one. Just over a minute and a half back to David and Matthew White in second. We'd be treated to just a few historic crews out on the rally this weekend, but that wouldn't affect the action. Will Rowlands and Leston Williams leading the way after stage four with a one minute advantage though. Behind them on the results will be Mike Simpson and Dale Gibbons. The Mark Wynn escort pair with a reasonably safe 49 seconds buffer in that position as well. Neil Weirden and Mark Fisher would end the morning as the leading crew in class C the Hyundai pair were suffering a little with the car cutting out, a problem they started to see on the Malcolm Wilson rally prior to this weekend, but they were just having to drive around the problem for now. In Class B, it would be R2 Power leading the way with Bradley Howlett and Nick van der Ven in the Peugeot 208 putting in some fantastic times to end the morning with a 39 second lead. Moving on for a look at Class A, we see Mark and Andrew Constantine taking a 31 second lead in the class by the end of the morning loop of stages in that hard charging Corsa. So an entertaining morning's loop of stages is complete. The leaderboard at the top is looking like this. We're on to the next loop of stages then here at the Northwest Stages and we wouldn't see a change in the lead, although it could have been a different story. Chris Ingram and Craig Drew have a high speed spin on the stage and are lucky to get away with minimal damage in the car on the road in the process. They lose only a small amount of time getting that car pointed in the right direction again and keeping a 28 second buffer for now. Put it on stage. Yeah. So we're on road mode now, yeah? Right now, we're back on stage. Yeah. Okay, let's go. Uh, just got to find my place, okay? Nips two right, nips over 50, slot four left in. Slot four left in. Down 50. Stay out late, short, tight, six left, don't. 
Paul McKinnon and Paul Beaton would still be the ones chasing the leaders and possibly thinking what could have been. They were unable to close in enough to catch our rally leaders at this stage, but we're still trying hard and wouldn't be dropping back any either, which was half of the battle, of course. The game plan was still going well for Neil Simpson and Michael Gibson, though. They round out our podium positions for now, but they couldn't relax. They only had three seconds of an advantage in that position, with just the final loop of stages to go. It would be Mark Kelly and Neil Coleman chasing down that podium still. And with the times so close now, they will be looking at a little extra push in the final stages to try and overhaul Simpson from that third place. Meanwhile, things had certainly been moving in the right direction for Frank Bird and Jack Morton. They gain a few positions overall in this loop of stages to reach the end of stage nine in fifth place now. For Simon Bowen and Richard Robinson, it will be sixth. However, the gap ahead to Bird was only two seconds. Things were close, and with four more stages to go, they wouldn't want to do any betting right now. Some of this shuffling in the results would mean a drop down to seventh place for Steve Wood and Dale Bowen. But that wouldn't leave them disappointed if they finished in that position within this highly competitive entry this weekend. There's no change, though, for Tom Preston and Carl Williamson. They would have wanted to have been higher, of course, on that leaderboard. For now, it would still be eight. They were, however, only seven seconds back from Wood. So it was still possible for them to advance up that leaderboard for the big push on the next few stages and perhaps just a touch of luck. No change for Joe Cunningham and Josh Beer. They were still going well, lying in ninth place. They were already a place higher on the leaderboard than their last outing on the East Riding stages. So they'd surely be happy with that. It's all progress, isn't it? And still rounding out our top 10 leaderboard at this stage will be Darren Atkinson and Phil Sandham in the escort. Just a single second behind Cunningham in that R5 Fiesta as well. Some crews are such big characters, they're notable by their absence. We lose Ross Brusby and Sam Collis, the engine giving them problems on the eighth stage of the rally. Their good luck from the morning loop, well and truly worn off now. So with the middle loop of the day complete here at the Legend Fires Northwest stages, the results at the top of our leaderboard are taking a little bit of a shake up. They look like this. A grueling event for some, we're on to the final loop of the rally. And before we take a look at those overall leaderboard results, let's take a look at how the classes were decided this weekend. In class A, it will be a third place finish for Anthony Harrison and Ella Tyson in the micro. The gaps in the class, quite big now with the loss of a few crews. For Darren Roberts and Dale Gabbert, it would be second in the Nova. But there wouldn't be any change at the top with Mark and Andrew Constantine continuing to hold that convincing lead and indeed extending it through the final loop of stages to take the class victory by over four minutes. There's no change in Class B either. John Deegan and Pauline Merrills take third place in the class this weekend, missing out on a position higher up the leaderboard by only four seconds. So clinging on to that position with their fingertips to the finish will be David and Stephen Benson. A good result for the pair. They were lucky not to lose that place and keep fighting right through to the finish boards. But taking the victory this weekend will be Bradley Howlett and Nick van der Ven. And a convincing victory in the class as well, with over three minutes of an advantage by the end of the three loops of stages. We'd see a bit of shake-up in Class C, but not in third place. That would still belong to Phil Turner and Terry Martin by the end of the rally in their escort. The change would come in second place, with Nathan Evans and Reese Edwards stepping up to take that position in this final loop of stages. A strong end to the rally for the hard-charging Clio pair. But despite their big push, there was no catching. The eventual class winners, Neil Weirden and Mark Fisher, managing to end their problems with the car to get to the rally finish with a 1 minute 40 lead in the class by the finish boards. And by contrast, Class D would be all change. We, of course, lost Ros Brusby in the last loop. And now we'd also lose the class leaders, Darren Atkinson and Phil Sandham, when they unfortunately went off the road. This drama leaving a brand new top three in the class and a bit of a shake-up. Third at the end of the rally would be Brad Cole and Jamie Vaughan. At the times at the top of the leaderboard ended up pretty close as well. 
Second place at the end of the rally will be Jerry Fitzell and Mark Mason. The escort pair happy with their finish. And only 53 seconds off the eventual class winners as well. And what of those Class D winners? Well, it will be Kyle Adam and Stephen Brown managing to keep everyone else at bay and taking advantage of those retirements up ahead to take the class win as well as 14th place overall. Sometimes it's good enough to be in the fight and to be ready to pick up any opportunities that come your way. We see plenty of change in Class E throughout the day, with Howard Price and Simon Rogers eventually coming home with third place in the class this weekend in the Evo. For Joe McCann and Charlotte McDowell, they will be second place in the class. The gaps either side pretty big, meaning that there wasn't much they could have done to advance on the leaderboard, and they would have had to make a pretty big mistake to lose that position as well this weekend. So all of that means that taking the class victory after leading all day long will be Wayne Sisson and Perida Davies. They keep out of trouble and end the day with a three-minute lead in the class as well as finishing just outside our top 10 with 11th place overall. The loss of a few crews in class H would bring some change, meaning that it's the second place in class for Jeff Roberts and Ian Jones. They will be one of only two crews managing to finish the event in this class, Mike Simpson and Dale Gibbons the other. And for them, it couldn't have been any better. They take the Class H trophy in that escort. We might be in the final closing stages of the event, but we hadn't stopped losing our crews. The attrition still biting. Tom Preston and Carl Williamson crashing out of the rally. They go too fast into a corner, putting the car through a stone wall. On to our finishers then, and it will be 10th place for Jonathan Mousey and Richard Wardle. They've been hovering in and around the top 10 all day, just about managing to get there in the afternoon stages this ceiling. Another notable crew we haven't mentioned yet will be event sponsor John Stone, Tom Woodburn alongside. John had been slowly increasing the pace as the day went on in the Volkswagen just beating Mousy to an extra place on the overall leaderboard as well with those times. And of course, Stone would be more than happy with how the event had gone from a sponsor's point of view, even if he would have liked to have been a few places higher up on that leaderboard. Joe Cunningham and Josh Beer would go one position better, ending the rally with eighth place overall, just managing to hold off John Stone by four seconds. They'd be probably glad there wasn't an extra stage or two because it really could have gone either way. For Steve Wood and Dale Bowen, who really came here not knowing what to expect, it would be a strong seventh place overall. A good end to the rally for the pair and a consistent pace throughout in that fiesta. Simon Bowen and Richard Robinson would be happy with their finish. They end the rally sixth place overall. The times were close with a few of the crews, all within reach going into the final few stages as well. But it would have to be sixth this time out for the Fiesta Pair. Another crew who came here with big expectations but not really knowing what to expect themselves were Frank Bird and Jack Morton. They, as a result, will be more than happy with fifth place given the entry list this weekend and their lack of experience on the closed roads. They've managed to open up that gap behind them as well by the finish. One crew who, despite a big push, couldn't manage to hold on to their position will be Neil Simpson and Michael Gibson. Bitterly disappointed to be dropping out of those podium positions and ending the event with fourth place overall. Still a great end to a tough weekend for the Simpsons Skoda pair. Onto those hard fought podium places then, and it will be third for Mark Kelly and Neil Coleman. They managed to gain that position in the final stages of the rally, taking a well deserved podium here among some very strong competition. For Paul McKinnon and Paul Beaton, it will be second. There'd be a bit of an issue with the timings going into the final stages. They get held up at an accident. But once those had been corrected, it showed the pair in that second place that they'd held all day. And indeed, they crossed the finish ramp with it. But taking a popular and ecstatic win would be Chris Ingram and Craig Drew. A great rally for the pair would see them win by 52 seconds. They haven't had it easy, let's not say that. The stages and their fellow competitors pushing them all the way. So, as an eventful 2022 legend fires Northwest stages draws to a close, 
And before we grab a few words of reaction from our rally winner, here's a reminder of how those overall results looked by the end of the day. Yeah, absolutely delighted with it. Um, relieved to be here, but uh, yeah, beyond our expectations, the result, and it's delighted to be here in this result, in this company. Yeah, we're delighted. I think we'll be second overall once the organisers get a time to catch their breath, we'll sort it. A couple of wee uh, accidents, unfortunately, for a few guys who had to stop. And uh, so, but normal times happen. Uh, apart from that, it's been a trouble for you running. Well, Jesus, we're over the moon with second place. No, it's been an incredible day. Made it difficult in the middle of the day. Had a massive moment and uh, some damage that we had to nurse for a few stages. But been an incredible day. Amazing world class stages and really pleased to get my first overall win in the UK. Share it out equally. <laughs> oh no, let's just get Chris. Yeah, that's a bit wet. He's got a drive home, yeah, careful.